So from here, let's figure out volume. Let's learn about volume. Does anybody here know how to define the term volume? How much space something takes up is a good way to put it. Is a good way to define volume. And we measure volume in things like centimeters cubed, inches cubed, and feet cubed. And just like with surface area, or just like with area in general, when we say centimeters cubed, we mean quite literally a cube centimeter. This is two centimeters of cube. So it's two by two by two, two centimeters. And it makes a cube. It's made out of eight cube centimeters, which is why if you say two times two times two, you get eight. You got four cubes on this side, four cubes on this side. We literally mean cube when we say cube. It takes up that much area of space. These take up the same volume. This is a one inch cube. It takes up one cubic inch of space. This is eight of them put together into a bigger cube, two inches by two inches by two inches. Does this make way too much sense? We're literally measuring how much space it takes up. This takes up this much space. How do we figure out, or let's do an example to figure it out. Let's skip a couple lines and let's draw a two by two square. And let's go back one diagonal from our three corners to draw an oblique cube and then connect your dots. And let's say it has a height of two. Uh, let's do this in centimeters. Height of two. Let's say it has a width of two. And of course, since it's a cube, it also has a depth of two. And so we basically just sketched this or this same thing. So the formula for volume for a rectangular prism or a cube in general is just multiply the three sides or length of sides together. So we say volume equals depth times width times height. And so we get two centimeters times two centimeters times two centimeters. And we get a total volume of eight centimeters cubed. And again, I cannot stress this enough. When we say eight centimeter cubed, we literally mean this cube, which is two by two by two, is eight individual cube centimeters. They take up the same amount of space. All right, so let's do another example. Let's do another cylinder like before. So we'll draw it the same way, but this time we'll measure it in inches instead of centimeters just to show you that math always works, even if you change your units. So again, make it too tall. Draw yourself a little center mark. Go out two in each direction, making it a two by four ellipse to make it look like we're looking at a cylinder from an angle. Give that little illusion. But just curve um, to connect those lines. And then again, from each side, go down five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then over here, the same thing. One, two, three, four, and five. And then one more time, just connect down here a little curve to give the illusion of a cylinder. And this time, like I said, let's measure it in inches. So we take the left to the right and we say, hey, this is four inches. And then we go from the bottom to the top, started from the bottom, now we, uh, we say five inches over mya and yaw, from bottom to top. Now what's cool about the formula for volume in general is it's always the same if the shape is uniform. The formula for volume is always base times height. And that sounds like area. But if you look here, the area of the base here is the depth times the width, which we say. So the area of the base times the height. That applies to any formula for any 3D object that is uniform. 
So for example, we can write volume equals base times height. And when we say base, what we mean is the area of the base multiplied by the height. And this would be the formula for, again, any 3D object that is uniform. And so what is the area of this? What shape is this base? And what's the formula for the area of a circle? So we multiply the area first, which you said was pi r squared, multiplied by the height. And what will we just say h for height? That's it. That's the formula for the volume of a cylinder. You see how I figured it out. This is true for, again, all 3D objects. If it's a triangular prism, find the area of the triangle and then multiply it by the height. Hexagon prism, hexagonal prism, same thing. Find the area of the hexagon, multiply it by the vol or I'm sorry, the height to get the volume. So we just plug in our numbers. We say, okay, uh, pi is still pi. R is two inches this time. And we square it and multiply it by our height, which is five. Okay, two squared is times five. 20. So we say, okay, volume equals 20 pi. And to simplify it, I'm just going to go ahead and do it for you. It's 62.8 inches cubed. And so what does that mean? I mean, the cylinder takes up about the same amount of space as if I stacked 62 of these cubic inches. They take up the same amount of space. So I need to go to the next page. I'll let you be the judge of whether or not you need to. I'm going to go ahead and draw my signature box down here and then go ahead and go to the next page and rewrite my title. Geometric solid properties. I'll let you add the date. So that covers volume. Again, I said that. That means that last shape would cover up or would take up the same amount of space as about 62 of these cubes. But what happens if the shape is not uniform? Think of like a rock. What's the formula for the volume of a rock? What's the, you remember those little Automobox box characters? They're weird shapes. What's the formula for the volume of an Automobox box character? Now, someone in my second period said... Well, we could cut it up into smaller pieces and get that volume. You're not wrong, but how would you get the volume of you? What's the formula for the volume of you? Does anybody know how to calculate the volume of irregular objects? So volume of irregular objects. What do you think? Have you ever sat in a bathtub and watched it overfill? It overfills because your volume disperses the water. How much does the water level raise? Equal to the amount of volume you take up. We will play with this next week in an activity where you will figure out the volume of your automobile box characters by dropping them in water and measuring it, how much it changes. But we call this fluid displacement. So we would say can be measured by fluid displacement. So what I mean is if I drop this inch cube into a cup of water and assuming it didn't float and it sank to the bottom, the water level would rise a little bit. The question is, is how much? Exactly one inch cubed. If I drop this in a cup of water, it would go up exactly eight inch cubed. Eight inches cubed, I should say. Because math, that's how it works. Um, and you might think, well, Mr. Anderson, that's great, but I don't measure water by inches cubed. I agree. That's what's cool about the metric system is they took the time to make sure that one milliliter is equal to exactly one centimeter cubed. In other words... If I drop this in a cup of water, it would go up, since it's one centimeter cube, it would go up exactly one milliliter. This is eight centimeters cubed. If I drop this in 50 milliliters of water, what would be the height of the water now? 58 milliliters, because math. 
pretty cool, huh? 